thickness. You always want to keep a neat rack. And I'm going to go ahead and quickly neaten this one up and then show you the guidelines that you're going to use to keep the rack neat. Now you see me going hand to hand using two hands. Don't do this. I'm just doing this just for uh, speed's sake so I can get this done quickly and show you what I need to show you. what the rack would probably look like when you were just opening the table. Some things to note, higher denomination checks are always in the middle. Here we got a purple and our black. It's flanked on either side by a row of green. Two rows of red, row each of white, then we have a row of pink. Depending upon the table maximum and minimum, there might be a different combination of checks in here. Higher limit table is going to have more of the green on up. Lower limit table is going to have more of the red on down. First thing to note, every color is blocked off whenever possible in stacks of 20. And they're uh, separated by these little clear things called lammers. Okay? Let's take out a stack of red, for example. There's a lammer. We've got one stack of red. Breaks down in the five. Five is the base unit or base stack. Remember our, uh, our check counting, or I don't even remember what I called it. The video when I showed you how to break the checks down, whatever that was called. So we have a stack of 20, got the lammer on it, and that separates it off. When there is not a full stack of an individual color, you'll notice they're lammered off into their base stacks. Here we have green is lammered off into groups of four. This red should be lammered off into groups of five. Let's do that right now. That's what that should look like, five and four and so on and so forth. When you're working out of your tray, remember if you're picking checks, you can pick on both sides of the tray, but you only want one working stack at any given time. Now, what do I mean by that? Here I got four stacks of red, okay? If I'm working out of both sides of my tray, I'm only going to use the outside two stacks of red. I'm not gonna use these inside two stacks of red unless I use up all these checks. Uh, same with the white. I'm going to, well, actually, I don't have a choice. There's only one stack of white here. I'm going to use these tubes. Uh, with the green, always work from the outside in. I'm not going to break into another stack on this side. Probably what I'll do is if I need green, I'm going to bring it out and transfer it. The reason I do that is to keep the tray as neat as possible at all times. That allows my floor supervisor or my pit manager to come over and they can quickly count down the tray. Just by looking at this, I can see we got. 10, we've got 17,500 in purple, 4,200 in black, uh, 1,400 green, 845 in red, 42 in white, and I'm going to assume that's a full stack, 50 in pink. And it's easier to count that faster when these are all lammered off. Now, as you deal the game, a lot of times your rack's going to look like this. See how not everything's nice and neat. Let's put some of off to the side just to show and let's take these out to show that we have working stacks on each side and so on and so forth. The black and the purple will always stay, or black, purple, and above, I'm sorry, will always stay neatly chipped up. Every time you're done painting those, you'll go ahead and chip them up into the proper units. Uh, green, red, white, and pink, you can have working stacks. Here are my working stacks. They're uneven, but there's only one stack on each side. Red, a working stack here, a working stack here. These are left alone until we need them. So if I'm picking payouts from here, I'm going to pick from the outside stacks. I think it's handed off over there. Maybe I need something over here. I think it's handed off over here. You're always going to work from the outside in. Now you'll notice pink is only on one side of the tray. We don't use pink that often, only to pay off blackjacks, and only if it's an odd amount that's bet. If we need the pink for one of those spots that are serviced with the right hand, just pluck it out with the right, goes in the working area, and off it goes to wherever it's needed. If we need it for the left hand, it's still plucked with the right, we just have to transfer. Remember, everything goes transfer, gets transferred through this working area. If you always think there's a little plexiglass wall here that you can't 
put your hand through or move your hands over, you won't go wrong. You can't reach over into the left side of the tray with your right hand, and you can't reach over on the right side of the tray with your left hand. Always transfer anything through the working area. Now let's say you got a lot of red over here and very little over here, and you want to bring some of the stacks over, same rules apply. You still have to bring the whole stack out, transfer it over. Whole stack out, transfer it over. Uh, one thing to try and keep in mind, whenever you're dealing with a stack, try to avoid palming the whole stack. If at all possible, put your finger up top. Why do we do that? Let's the player, the floor supervisor, and surveillance know that we're not trying to palm a chip. Okay, I know none of you are dishonest, but I don't want even it to even appear that you might be doing something dishonest. Do this to protect yourself. Avoid this. Now you say, but my hand's not big enough to do that. Turn your hand upside down. These two fingers go on the base, the thumb goes on top, and you can handle a very large stack just like that. You can still maneuver it around. Okay? Always try and keep your hands as open as possible to protect yourself. And that's about that for now.